little help, just a little. I just really rely on the generosity of others. They have the most deep-seated sense of entitlement that I've ever come across. Has America become a nation of freeloaders? It was just an easy way to get money, fast money. But this freeloading is just small time. There's bigger money in getting government to help you freeload. They need to start writing checks. So Congress will now give $50,000 to any black American who says he attempted to farm. Attempted to farm could mean anything. The foreclosure crisis. We're told banks are the bad guys. They took homes from innocents. <laughs> but this woman hasn't paid her mortgage for 25 years. She says she doesn't have to. And these guys' website encourages people not to pay. It sounds like a scam, but this is true. It's not a scam at all. It's completely legal. And you guys are disgusting. You're helping people free love. Politicians love doing that. You can help your girlfriend. You can help your girlfriend's mama. And everyone will applaud you because... Everybody thinks the government owes them something. Some American Indians are rich, but others stay poor, feeding off government. Socialists like you have convinced oh, them to oh, do I'm that. Socialist but now. they now, do if better I'm a socialist, without the government. If I'm a socialist, what does that make you? I thought I was a capitalist, but I'm a freeloader too. You help me pay for my beach house. Bon Jovi, Ted Turner, Bruce Springsteen, and CEOs like Jeffrey Immelt are freeloaders, too. We'll call them on it. You're a freeloader. America, a nation of freeloaders. In cities, you often see people like this guy. Desperate-looking people often holding signs like this one. It's natural to want to help people like this man or this woman begging by a road in Salt Lake City. Her sign says she's stranded, in need of help, trying to get home. When drivers stop, she tells them... I'm from Seattle. I came down here to live with my boyfriend, and he ended up kicking me out a week before Christmas. You got nothing then? No, just my backpack. She tells this reporter from KUTV she's a thousand miles from home. It's hard to eat. It's hard to have a place to stay. But then the cameraman quietly followed her and found she actually lives just two blocks away in this house. In the morning, she'd go shopping with a nice coat and purse. And then in the afternoon, she changed clothes and walked two blocks to the highway off-ramp and took out her son. People gave her money. Uh, about three bucks, five dollars. Doing the math shows she made more than 50 bucks an hour. I just felt sorry for her. A girl out there like that. I gave her a couple dollars. She lives in a house. What do you think about that? That is crazy. I live in a trailer. <laughs> Dude, people pull over. I don't say anything to anybody. I hold this sign. I don't make anybody give me money. It is true that she doesn't make anyone give her money, but Thank lots of people so want to help those who well, seem to be I'll, in need. I got it. But lots of America's beggars are not needy. They're just freeloaders who've found a good racket. When I first reported on freeloading, I wondered, would these people holding will work for food signs really work for food? I just can't work for anybody. Would he flip burgers at Burger King? I wouldn't do it. It's a monotonous job. Maybe construction. I can't do it. My back. He says he would do janitorial work. That I would do. But will he do it five days a week? That I can't do. Why not? Uh, well, why should I? Why does a human have to work every day if he don't want to? I have lawn work. Do you? You have some right now? I offered jobs to a dozen people who said they'd work for food. All 12 said they'd come, but only this man did. He did the work, and we paid him 20 bucks, but he might have made more money begging. There have been estimates uh, that uh, uh, earning $100 a day panhandling is easy. Steve Malanga and Heather McDonald write for City Journal, a magazine about urban policy. They say beggars today are hustlers. But there must be a lot of them who are genuinely homeless or mentally ill, desperate people. Well, every big city has food kitchens galore. The reason that people are on the streets asking for change is overwhelmingly drugs and alcohol. I wasn't homeless, you know. It was just an easy way to get money. John Buster used to make a living panhandling. And the best day? Maybe about $150. Did he have trouble finding a job? I didn't look for no job. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? That was my job. <laughs> Panhandling as a job is common in some places. Here in San Francisco, packs of young, healthy kids beg for spare change. 
Spanging, they call it. Gotta survive, you know. Gotta eat, gotta drink. An art student from Stanford interviewed some of the kids. Wake up in the morning, and start drinking, go to bed, do it again. That's pretty much it. <laughs> they have the most deep-seated sense of entitlement that I've ever come across. We want to be able to sit where we want to. This is our home, man. Nobody's going to make us leave. Punishing homeless people for being homeless when insufficient shelter space is unavailable. America's so-called homeless advocates often say government should solve this problem by spending more on social services, shelters, subsidies for affordable housing, jobs program. This is a solution that is utterly irrelevant to these kids because they're not planning on settling down. They don't want housing. We really rely on the generosity of others. And there's some very generous people. There sure are. Thank you so much, sir. This oh, beggar collected you. $8 in less than an hour. Past minimum wage. Can you help me, ma'am? That's me, with a beer. A thank you. Since people wouldn't give John Stossel money, I hired this makeup artist to transform me into a beggar. She glued a beard to my face. Then I put on some old clothing. Okay. You ready to freeload? It's the new John Stossel. I hit the streets and started begging. I didn't want to get in anyone's face, so I didn't beg aggressively. Most of the time, I just sat on the sidewalk. At first, I tried the basic, homeless and cold, anything will help sign. Little help? It worked. A little bit? This woman gave me food. Oh, thank you very much. A little food. I even got offered a Maybe. cigarette. Cigarette? No, thank you. This man gave me some change and a job off. Listen, if you're looking for a little work, I need somebody to hand out flyers. You know, if you're around, I'll see you tomorrow and uh, here? give you some work. Yeah. Thank you. After half an hour, I switched to this sign. Can I get a beer? I'd seen beggars trying this more honest, or you might say funny, approach. I didn't think anyone would give this guy money, but I was wrong. Thank you. You know, my beer drinker, my son. Yeah, thank you. I made just as much money with my beer thank sign you, as I did with my cold and homeless sign. Some people wanted to take my picture. That's funny as hell. Can I have a picture with you? Sure. My girlfriends will think that's too cute. Okay. I'll buy you a beer. There you go. Did you get it? Jenny got a crack up. We caught up with the people who gave me money, <laughs> gave them their money back, and asked them, why did you give? It's kind of cold outside. I'm pretty cold myself, so I'm thinking about his situation. I don't know. That guy looked pretty needy, I suppose. <laughs> I just begged for an hour, but I did well. If I did this for an eight-hour day, I would have made 90 bucks, 23 thou for a year, tax-free. That easy money is why cities are filled with panhandlers. Individuals respond to incentives. If that incentive includes giving them money for no work, There'll be more of them doing that. And the people who give... They're doing a very bad thing. They are merely perpetuating uh, somebody's misery. As long as they can stay on the streets getting money for drugs and alcohol, they're going to. Uh, and they're enabling a very self-destructive lifestyle. You're just right-wingers who are not compassionate. Mm. Some of these kids, adults, are, must be in need. Some are, but the proper solution for that is not to keep enabling a lifestyle that so eventually just is going right to leave. Just Just ignore them? Uh, yes. That's the advice city agencies give. Give real change to the homeless. Call us. We'll send an outreach team to help. Give to charities. Don't give to people. It doesn't get through. A few cities, this is Athens, Georgia, try to get through to people by installing fake parking meters. They call them homeless meters. On the parking meters, it says, you know, don't give to the panhandler. If you feel a need for compassion, put it in here. We'll make sure it go to, goes to people who really need the money and, and it, the money is used in the, in the right way. Resources do exist to help the truly needy. Food kitchens are plentiful. One charity I like is the Doe Fund. They helped John Buster put panhandling behind him. Instead of giving handouts, they retrain people to take responsibility for their lives. They, they, they don't allow you to get food stamps or anything or nothing like that. That's not allowed in the door fund. They want you to be independent. They gave John room and board and paid him to clean streets. Now he supervises others. You don't have to wait around for somebody to give you something. You go out there and you make your own money. 
you know, you get your self-esteem back. Because happiness comes from productive work, not freeloading. But at least beggars don't force anyone to give them money. Other freeloaders do. Corporations and politicians do that. And some lawyers do that. Isn't freeloading fun? I bet I could make even more money if I got a law degree. Then I could start suing businesses. Or you taxpayers. That's made this man millions. That's next. We're back with more on freeloaders. Do you remember the Shirley Sherrod scandal? Ms. Sherrod must resign immediately. The federal government cannot have skin color deciding any assistance. A video of Sherrod suggested that the Department of Agriculture loan officer refused to help a farmer because he was white. Sherrod then quit. This is a Fox News alert. An Obama administration official resigned just a short time ago. But then... We now know that video was edited to take what she said and twist it. I owe Ms. Sherrod an apology. But lost in the hype about Shirley Sherrod was a much bigger story. One that's eating billions of your tax dollars. What do we want? Justice! What do we want? It? These protesters brought tractors and horses to Washington, claiming that the Agriculture Department loan officers did the opposite of what Sherrod was falsely accused of. They favored whites. This lawyer claims the department is racist. If John Stossel goes back to wherever you might have grown up and you decide to farm and you go in to get a loan, you're going to do pretty well. You're a white man. But if you sent in a neighbor of yours who happened to be a black man to your local county committee, you're not going to do well. Because they're all racist? Pretty much. So he sued the government on behalf of black farmers. The government issued a groveling apology. We are requiring full civil rights training for all of our employees, starting from me down. And the United States agreed to pay $50,000 to any black farmer who could show that the department discriminated against him. People in Congress said things like, They need to start writing checks today. The government is writing billions in checks. But farmer Jimmy Dismook says it's a scam because lawyers told people anyone can qualify for $50,000. People say, well, how do I qualify? And then they started talking about the potted plants. And they said, if you had a potted plant, you can be a, you're a farmer. And if you have a yard and you fertilize it, you're a farmer. Dismook showed us a list of people who got money. This one is not a farmer. This one's not a farmer. And then you go on and on on these pages. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Not farmers. We called and left messages for the people on the list, but no one responded. Dismook was discriminated against, and he collected $50,000. But then he noticed what he calls the fraud. Since the government had few records, it settled the lawsuit by agreeing to write checks to people who just said they'd attempted to farm. An attempted to farm could mean anything. You know, you know my, my little three-year-old grandson could have tempted. How could you lose? There's no way you can lose. Othello Cross. Jimmy once hired this lawyer, yes, Othello Cross, okay. who's made money by filing thousands of $50,000 right. right. claims. This is the termination agreement. Cross says this he only learned about the fraud after the claims uh, were paid. People would come up to him and say, mm -hmm. Lawyer, you know, John never farmed in his life. His daddy never farmed. When I went back and looked at it, it was true. Mm-hmm. And so more than a billion dollars was given out to about 15,000 farmers and attempted farmers. So many claimed they were farmers that recently Congress approved another billion dollars plus for more claimants. This farmer, who didn't want to appear on camera, showed us a building where many people who said they attempted to farm filled out claims. They wasn't really farmers, but Pyrie, Al Pyrie made it possible for them to be eligible by coming in and saying if you attempted to farm that you're eligible. Al Pyres, he's that lawyer who won the big settlement. How many farmers have you helped file claims? Oh gosh, thousands, thousands and thousands. How do you know they're farmers? Well, the, they fill out the forms and we, we, we hope that they're telling the truth. So you don't think this is just an opportunity to freeload, to cheat? Although there are some uh, people who cheat, most people are very honest 
Most people are very, very honest. They're afraid to cheat if they're filling out a federal form. It's not quite what you think. But given America's culture of entitlement, some don't even view getting checks as cheating. They say all black people deserve reparations. If you are an African-American, you do $50,000 because your roots are in farming. You folk have already been cheated. You're just collecting what your grandparents didn't have the opportunity to. After all, says the lawyer, the government is racist. He says the USDA is stacked against minorities, stacked against blacks, stacked against women, Native Americans, it's stacked against everybody but white men. Is there any minority that wasn't discriminated against? Not to my knowledge. So now he's filed lawsuits for all those groups, including the women. In 1978, women owned just 5% of all farms. By 97, the number was up to 8%. Maybe you should sue for men. Uh, for, for white men? Yeah. White men don't need any help. How much money will you get? We, we, we were paid very modestly. $10 million? Um, year around there. It was very, it was very low. And they were, low? I, I don't think $10 million is low. And Othello Cross says the total lawyer's take <sighs> was much more. <laughs> Somewhere between 40 and $50 million. I believe the lawyers made out real well. And uh, I think they was the winners in the whole lawsuit. They usually are. And they make even more money helping other people freeload. That's next. The last people we consider freeloaders are homeowners. They're the salt of the earth. Many go into debt to get their homes. <laughs> and then cruelly, some lose their home. Since the housing busts, we've heard such sad stories. A foreclosure judge gave the 82-year-old disabled woman 24 hours to pack up and leave. I was traumatized. But there is another side to this story. This Florida woman hasn't made a mortgage payment since 1985. The bank says she owes hundreds of thousands of dollars, but she just doesn't pay. She's delayed foreclosure by filing legal appeals. The 25-year foreclosure from hell is what the bank's lawyer calls it. She's beaten you. She's got a good bit of knowledge about the law. She's a paralegal who's good at using bank paperwork errors to her advantage. A few months ago, a court finally forced her out, but she got to live here rent-free for 25 years. She's winning. She's learned how to freeload off the system. I give her a lot of kudos for that. Why does he give her kudos? She's a freeloader. He's a freeloader, too. Win or lose, he still collects a paycheck from the bank. The losers are you people who pay your mortgage on time. Should some of these bankers get arrested? Absolutely. I mean, the media claim that evil banks take homes from people. It's a disaster for millions of Americans. The problem isn't with the borrowers. It's with the lenders and servicers. It's not the borrowers, it's the bank. That attitude leads some people to trash their homes before the bank can take it back. This guy drove his truck through his home. So I wasn't about to, to give the, the house back to the bank so they could profit off of me. Restructure Don't take the home! And Jesse Jackson's protesters are in the streets, criticizing the banks. They claim predatory lenders trick people into taking out unaffordable loans. But is that true? The Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta found unaffordable loans are unlikely to be the main reason that borrowers decide to default. If predatory lending isn't the main driver of defaults, then what might be? YouWalkAway.com was founded... In well, companies that encourage people to walk away from commitments sure don't help. YouWalkAway.com. I mean, there sounds something dirty about that, like walk away from responsibility. Well, that's, that's the, uh, the myth, I think, in society that... There's this moral uh, obligation to continue paying a mortgage. There is. There is no ethical obligation. Co-founder Chad Rule calls it a strategic default. If your house is worth less than your mortgage, just stop paying. His website asks if you'd like to live payment-free for eight months or more and walk away without owing a penny. I mean, it sounds like a scam, but this is true. No, it's not a scam at all. It's completely legal. Peter Safranoff, one of their clients, stopped paying his mortgage. You could have afforded to stay there and pay the mortgage. Well, and they could you have. You broke. You, you no, had the money. Safranoff bought this house in California for about $400,000. After the housing bubble burst, its value dropped to 300000 
When his bank wouldn't modify his mortgage, youwalkaway.com advised him that he could default on purpose without paying another dime. More grim numbers on the home front. Of course, when a person defaults, it's not just the bank who picks up the tab. You might pay your mortgage on time, but if your neighbor forecloses, it tends to reduce the value of your home, too. I live up to my contract, and they're thus uh, left with... Your legal contract? What about your moral contract? My moral contract... Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by moral. You're hurting other people. You're hurting your neighbors. You're hurting everybody else who wants to get a mortgage. This is not a moral issue. You guys are disgusting. You're helping people freeload. We're not helping people freeload. You know, people's decision to, to walk away is a personal one and is a financial one. Uh, but isn't it immoral? No. Next, the group that may be the biggest freeloaders of all, corporations. That's what we usually picture when we think of freeloading. But in America today, the bigger recipient of handouts is not poor people, it's corporations. GE, imagination at work. GE is the biggest industrial corporation in the world. Here's their CEO with President Obama. Jeff Immelt is perhaps the CEO who is most cozy with President Obama. And Jeff Immelt was recently named the country's job czar. I am so proud and pleased that Jeff has agreed to chair this panel. General Electric is structuring their business around where government is going. So everything from high-speed rail, solar, wind, General Electric is lining up to get what government's handing out. The New York Times reports that government handed out so many tax breaks to GE thanks to their, quote, fierce lobbying, that despite billions in profit, they paid no taxes in 2010. Once upon a time in America, companies got money from investors and created wealth by inventing things. 25 years ago, my friends and I started with nothing but an idea. Microsoft did that. They started with nothing and created billions in shareholder wealth. But then... Microsoft is free to compete and compete aggressively, but not unlawfully. The government sued Microsoft for offering people free software at the time. Microsoft spent exactly zero dollars on lobbying. They were busy changing the world. They were busy creating a computer revolution and helping the internet revolution. And for that, they got drawn into court. They spent millions and hundreds of millions defending themselves against the Justice Department. So how much money do they spend today on lobbyists? Hundreds of millions of dollars a year. They learned their ugly lesson. We created a system in which... If you don't do it, you're at a competitive disadvantage. A public-private partnership. A public-private partnership. A public-private partnership. Businesses love to have a partner in government. This little window maker must have loved the attention it got by having the vice president praise its products. You're not just churning out windows. You're making some of the most energy-efficient windows in the world. Think getting the vice president was a big deal? Heck, they got the president, too. These workers will now have a new mission, producing some of the most energy-efficient windows in the world. Other companies don't get so much government help, but this company gave money to the Democrats. And one of their executives was married to an important Energy Department official. It sure is nice to get special government help. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, uh, for your unwavering support. Left-wing think tanks criticize corporate welfare, but somehow green handouts, they're okay. Everybody wants to find a better, fuel-efficient way to go about their daily business. The government's going to invest in certain companies to pioneer new technologies. That, I think, is not corporate welfare. The business is too dumb to invest in it without government saying, do this and here's help. The private sector will only invest if they know for sure that there is a commercial marketplace. But you say everybody wants these things. Isn't that enough incentive for private, greedy businesses to make it? The free market does not know anything unless we all collect our interests and say this is of national import to us. Central planning does not work. It doesn't work in any industry. It doesn't work in any, uh, in any kind of economy. But since they're going to centrally plan, they'll give out special favors to the politically savvy people who are best at lobbying for them of at least $200 million is needed. 
And so the government pours billions of your dollars into projects like the Roscoe Wind Farm in Texas. It's half owned by GE. Even if this wind farm produces nothing of value, they are getting money from the U.S. tax payer. Maybe we don't need wind turbine. Maybe it's a waste of money. Well, maybe it is, but it should be one thing that we as a nation are investing in so that we aren't left behind. Some of the cleanest renewable energy on Earth. GE would not agree to be interviewed. Maybe that's a good thing if it means companies are now getting embarrassed about the handouts. Fourteen years ago, when I wanted to confront a business about its freeloading, the CEO was so brazen, he flew me to his headquarters in one of his fancy jets. This isn't gold, is it? Uh, gold plated. Can I get you anything else? At the time, this man was the biggest recipient of handouts, Dwayne Andreas, CEO of ethanol maker ADM. You're a pig feeding at the welfare trough. Why should I care? It doesn't bother you. Not a bit. Many beneficiaries of corporate welfare really believe that they're being paid to help the country. What I'm providing is so good that it ought to be subsidized. Unfortunately, a lot of American companies have become mooches off the government. They go to the government to manipulate the system in their favor. That's what not business is about. That's not what capitalism is about. But today, unfortunately, it is a way for capitalists to free them. Businesses do it, and rich individuals do it. People like me. Coming up, the group that politicians have helped the most. What has freeloading done for them? Nothing good. No group in America has been helped more by government than American Indians. And yet, some politicians still tell Indians things like this. Few have been ignored by Washington for as long as Native Americans. Ignored? Are you kidding me? Look at the signs around this Sioux reservation in South Dakota. Our government has made Indian tribes wards of our state. Government manages their land, provides their health care, their schools, gives them food stamps, pays for housing, child care, even burial assistance. The result? There is a stunning poverty here. Only one in four has a job. There is scarcity of phones, not even any banks. Indians have the highest poverty rate and lowest life expectancy of any group in America. So the Sioux told us they need more handouts. The government should be giving the Indian people more, more appropriations to, so that we could exist out here still. I really feel Obama's administration needs to get up to the plate and deal with it. Because white people stole the Indians' land hundreds of years ago, the government signed treaties. And that's why Washington sends billions of dollars to Indian tribes every year. Everybody thinks the government owes them something. It's odd in that no group has been more helped by government than the American Indians, and no group does worse. Maybe it's the government. Ben Chavis is a member of a tribe that doesn't get special government help. And yet... The area where you live looks different from Indian reservations. There's mansions. They look like uh, English manors. I can take you to one neighborhood where my people are from and show you nicer homes than a, than a whole Sioux reservation. And this is not casino money, no special deal for your tribe. Oh, no. In my tribe, we don't have any casinos. We have 12 banks. Chavis says his tribe does well because the federal government does not recognize them as a sovereign tribe. Though their congressman wants to change that. It's time for discrimination to end and recognition to begin. Oh, Mike knows if he wants to stay in Washington, D.C., he has to support the Lumbees or he won't be there. This is an injustice that, yes, must finally be resolved. If the congressman gets his way, your tribe will just get 80 million bucks. It's tough to say no to that. If you want to become dependent on the government, and sell your soul for 80 million? I understand that. And some people are willing to do that. Indian activists like lawyer Elizabeth Homer say the Lumbees ought to get federal recognition. Homer used to be the U.S. Interior Department's Director of American Indian Trusts. Well, the Lumbees have been neglected and left out of the system and have been petitioning for 100 years for their recognition, well, for which they're entitled, by the way. They're petitioning because socialists like you have convinced oh, them to I'm do that. Oh, I'm socialist but, now. 
they well, do better if I'm a socialist, without the government. If I'm a socialist, what does that make you? It makes me and Ben Chavis capitalists, and capitalist Indians achieve. Your Indians are thriving. Our Indians are working. The Scott brothers built a company that now employs 16 people, putting up power lines. They didn't get any government help. It made me drive twice as hard, you know, knowing it, he wouldn't help us and all. It panned out pretty good for us. We've just been always been hard workers. So that's what that is. This Lumbee tribe member, Lizzie Locklear, runs one of the biggest true value hardware stores in the country. The day after I graduated, the next day I was at work. The Lumbees are doing well. Tremendous survivors. A great example of how you can continue to persist under absolutely the worst, the worst treatment that so you could hope do to well get. well because they've divorced themselves from these government handouts. They they've have. done well. Without individuals federal, have done well. Exactly. Individuals free of special government protection like Lumbee Jim Thomas, a real estate developer who used to own the Sacramento Kings. Jack Lowry, an original owner of the Cracker Barrel restaurants. Or Sybil Bullard, who owns J.R. Jones Grain. We had to fend for ourselves. We had to do what we needed to do to survive. We don't mind getting our hands dirty and getting the job done because we know that if we do, we will be rewarded for that. What helped the Lumbees, said Ben, was knowing that they had to become entrepreneurs and support themselves. On the reservations, they haven't trained to be capitalists. They've been trained to be communists. Everything you need someone's approval. Tribal governments and the Bureau of Indian Affairs manage most Indian land in America. Indians often compete to serve on tribal councils because then they can give out the government's money. You can help your relatives. You can help your girlfriend. You can help your girlfriend's mama. It's a great program. Not so great for the majority of Indians. Because the government owns most Indian property, individuals rarely build nice homes or businesses. No individual on the reservation owns the land, so they can't do anything with it. They can't develop it. Let's look at my tribe. We have title and deeds to our land. That's the secret. I, I raise cattle, Red Angus cattle. I can do what I want to because it's my private property. My buddy on the White Mountain Apache Reservation, he has a farm, but he can't do the same things I can do. If the tribe decided one day, we want to take your land on the reservation and give it to one of my relatives, they could do that. Government handouts don't work well even for the freeloaders. But there are always enablers who say, yes, they will. American Indians own more land than any group in America, and you are still the poorest group. How can that be? Indian reservations are basically in areas that have been neglected by the United States. <laughs> The tribes have been located in some of the most isolated areas ge geographically. So what? Other isolated groups have done well. How come the Mormons got rich? Where they lived just as poor, how come the Amish got wealthy, even rejecting modern tools? I don't know how wealthy the Amish are, and I don't know how it's, the Mormons got rich. Maybe because they weren't relying on government rules and Indian trusts and all your lawyering that teaches Indians to be helpless? Oh my goodness, I don't think that that's true at all. I take umbrage at that, sir. What you're really saying is Indians are too dumb to manage their own land, so the government has to be, you know, papa and take care of us. We don't need the government giving us handouts. There is no Bureau of Irish Affairs or Latino Affairs. Why is there a Bureau of Indian Affairs? We are a starved people in a rich nation. Already we've got the Empowering Tribal Nations Initiative, the Advancing Nation-to-Nation -nation Relationships, Protecting Indian Country, Tribal Priority Allocations, Indian Land Consolidation Program, all these government programs. Indians are poor. Indians, Indians are poor, die young. and that's why these programs are so important. But maybe these programs are why Indians are poor. Well, I don't think that that's a fair thing to say. In fact, I think that they are the most neglected, the most neglected of any population Government in the United States. Government needs to do more. Yeah. And every freeloader wants more. We get welfare checks, we get grant checks, we get food stamps, but if you look at these farmers and ranchers, they get the same thing. That's what these subsidy payments are for.
It is true that subsidies also go to farmers and ranchers and big companies. But just like the gift given these people, subsidies keep you dependent. The handouts certainly haven't helped America's Indians. We got all kind of Indian programs in America. The homeless program, the stimulus packet. It's all welfare. It's all a con. Speaking of cons. This isn't the only time I freeloaded. Next, we'll show you how the biggest freeloaders are rich people like me. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I'm a freeloader. And in big government America, it's we rich people who freeload the most. Years ago, I built this beach house. That's younger me there. The house was on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. A risky place to build, but I built anyway, because a federal program guaranteed my investment. It can happen to you. Protect your home with flood insurance. Congress created government flood insurance to help foolish people who don't buy private flood insurance and lose their homes when the water rises. The flood insurance program provides valuable protection for approximately 5.5 million homeowners. So taxpayers may help foot the bill if a flood hits movie stars' homes on Malibu Beach or Derek Jeter's new mansion in Florida or the Kennedy family compound. Why? We rich people should insure our own homes. Eventually, a storm swept away my first floor, but I didn't lose a penny. Thanks. I never invited you there, but you paid for my new first floor. Then the whole house went. Government flood insurance covered my loss and many others. We rich people freeload off you taxpayers all the time because the overpromisers in there keep churning out special deals for politically favored groups. And they tend to be rich people because the rich can afford lobbyists. There are thousands of lobbyists within a few blocks of where I was standing. If you want some advantage, you pay them to persuade Congress to give you a special tax break, like the one for electric cars. It is endless the possibilities that this bill will pursue, encouraging energy-efficient products such as plug-in hydrant cars. His tax credit led dealers like this one to advertise free carts. Buy one for $6,000, get a $6,000 tax credit. Governor Mike Huckabee got one. His friend got seven. And I got this one. Totally free. Free for me, anyway. You taxpayers paid for it. Then I put solar panels on the roof of my new home. Why? Because Congress gave me a big tax break. If you want to, for instance, invest in solar energy in your home, we have tax credits in there. So many of these programs that are supposed to be have a broad benefit end up having a narrow benefit. To me. To, 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 to us to, who are rich enough to put solar panels in the house or buy an electric car or have a beach house on the edge of an ocean. So it's another situation where the government creates a benefit and the people with more money, with better tax accountants, are better able to take advantage of it. We cannot turn back. Not with an economy to fix and farms to save. Farmers get lots of well-intended handouts from government. But who benefits? Mostly rich farmers and people like Bon Jovi, who owns acres of land in New Jersey but pays only $100 in state property tax. Because he raises honeybees, he qualifies for a honeybee subsidy. Bruce Springsteen owns hundreds of acres of land, but pays little tax on it because an organic farmer works his land. His poor neighbors pay more. It's unfair that I have to pay for an acre and a half, $6,000, and then they're paying for hundreds of acres for $200. America's single biggest recipient of farm subsidies has been Maurice Wilder. The multimillionaire owns some farmland, but he mostly builds homes and offices. Here's one of his many homes. Gorgeous view, but no crops around here. Others who've collected farm subsidies are basketball star Scottie Pippen, billionaire Ted Turner, even the family of anti-subsidy congresswoman Michelle Bachman. None of these people broke any laws. They or their families just own land that qualifies for handouts. But think about how much money we could save if these guys just didn't pass so many laws that encourage but they do, year after year. They micromanage life with subsidies. And the winners are not so much the needy 
But people like Bon Jovi, Ted Turner, Maurice Wilder, and me. So, let's hope for an end to all this freeloading. That's our show for tonight. I'm John Stossel. Good night.